上海的虹桥国际机场。At Hongqiao International Airport in Shanghai, it's 10:30 p.m. and I've never seen it like this. Normally, when you think of airport waiting areas or high-speed rail waiting halls, you picture crowds everywhere. But tonight, I'm going to show you how empty this airport is. Not sure if it's because it's late or due to the economic downturn, but there are hardly any people here. It used to be bustling. And now it's eerily quiet. I'm honestly shocked. What do you all think about this? On October 28, a video posted on Douyin showed a surprisingly empty scene at Shanghai Hongqiao International Airport. The main hall was almost devoid of passengers, and rows of shops were closed. This desolation isn't limited to Hongqiao. Pudong International Airport also displays visible signs of decline. The reduced number of international flights is just one indicator of China's worsening economic situation. Shanghai Pudong Airport. I'm at Shanghai Pudong Airport and it's so deserted. I'm just here for my flight and I wanted to grab a bite to eat at the gate, but even the restaurants are closed. Isn't that strange? Come and check out this special Shanghai phenomenon. Recent international exhibitions in Shanghai have also seen unusually sparse attendance. Gone are the bustling crowd of international and domestic attendees, leaving once lively halls devoid of the international vibrancy they used to hold. It's 9 a.m. at the exhibition, and the main aisle is practically empty, just staff. By 11:40 a.m., still hardly anyone around. This place used to be packed. But the audience turnout this year is incredibly low. Next year, I don't think we'll come back. Now it's 2 p.m., and it's still the same story. Just company staff hanging around their own booths. Look, no one else is here. The 2024 FBC China International Windows and Doors Curtain Wall Expo, held at the National Exhibition and Convention Center from October 16 to 19, presented a stark contrast to previous years. With the downturn in real estate, the downstream industry of windows and doors have entered a harsh winter, evident in the subdued turnout at the event. The 2024 China Brew and Beverage Manufacturing Expo, held from October 28 to 31st at the Shanghai New International Expo Center, saw similar disappointment. Vendors lamented the low foot traffic, stating that many exhibitors regretted investing in booth spaces that range from tens to hundreds of thousands of yuan, now left underutilized in the nearly empty exhibition halls. The 20th International Auto Customization Expo (RA) showcased high-end modified cars in Shanghai's World Expo Exhibition Hall, spanning 30,000 square meters. Despite past popularity, the 2024 event was markedly quiet, with only a handful of visitors in attendance. While the luxury modified cars still shone on display, the lack of audience enthusiasm rendered the event silent and subdued. Exhibitors facing empty booth offered promotions and discounts in vain to draw in attendees. This year in Shanghai, things seem more dismal than I expected. Even though I anticipated it, I'm still shocked. It's past 2 a.m. and I can't sleep. I'm just thinking, why has the instrument industry come to this? Walking into the hall, there's only one hall for piano, and it's not even full. In the past, there were always lines for the restrooms, and now they're empty. You don't have to wait. This year, the drums are limited, and similar instruments. Instruments like guitars and traditional instruments are fewer too, but the piano section feels especially deserted. Why has it come to this? At the core, it's a reflection of how challenging things are across China. The Shanghai Musical Instrument Exhibition, held from October 10th to 13th, was visibly less crowded this year. In particular, the pro audio section was nearly deserted, unable to attract even half the usual exhibitors. One exhibitor noted that this year's Shanghai Musical Instrument Exhibition was perhaps the bleakest in over 20 years. Iconic brands such as Steinway, Kawai, Parsons Music, Pearl River, and Changjiang Piano, normally central features, were noticeably absent. The piano section itself was only half filled, with most small and mid-sized Chinese piano brand missing altogether. Signs of economic recovery are scarce in China, and Shanghai, long seen as China's economic powerhouse, appears affected.
Over the past four decades, Shanghai has been a driving force for economic growth in China under the various policy initiatives. However, following the pandemic, the government's economic stimulus measures have struggled to take hold. Many small and medium-sized enterprises face bankruptcy, import export activities have slowed, unemployment rates remain high, and consumer spending is dwindling, leaving many malls deserted. I feel like Shanghai's Grand Gateway Mall in Shujiahui isn't what it used to be. Take a look at all these stores. Even on a weekend afternoon, it's just sparse. This place was once an iconic spot in Shanghai, but it's far from its peak now. Back in 2019, I remember property company Hung Lung reporting its prime location still had high rents in Shanghai. In just a few years, it's become this quiet. Back in the day, Grand Gateway was known for being a hub. Now, fewer people probably think of it that way. Do you think Grand Gateway has truly declined? Is the economy in Shanghai really like this? I went to IFC Mall in Shanghai over the weekend, and I was honestly shocked. It was a Saturday afternoon, and the first floor was almost empty. I never dared to go there on weekends before because such store had long lines. Now, even the Hermes store has no lineups. In the basement cosmetics section, there is mostly just staff. My favorite little French bistro, known for its souffles, right next to the Apple Store, is closed now. Only the Apple Store is packed thanks to the. The new iPhone 16. I heard that rents at Hanbin Plaza dropped 24% in the first half of the year. Would you still buy luxury goods in this economic downturn? The Shanghai IFC Mall, an upscale shopping destination in the heart of the Lu Da Zhui CBD, hosts numerous luxury brands across its first and second floor. Once a buzzing hub where people queued for hours at dining spots, the mall now sees even affluent. Shoppers growing cautious with their spending, vacancy rates in commercial spaces have reached historic highs. Huangpu Greenland, colorful city, a commercial complex in Shanghai's Huangpu district, covering fifty-four thousand square meters near Nanyuan River Side Park, and the Huangpu River, is now mostly closed. Only a few restaurants and a cosmetic surgery clinic remain open, leaving this once prominent mall in a state of bleak emptiness. The CFO at Shanghai Architectural Design Consulting Co. recently posted a video saying he feels like the economy in Shanghai is lagging behind even some smaller cities. Over the past two years, almost everyone I know at work has faced layoffs. Some people haven't found work in nearly two years and have just gone back to their hometowns. I went to rent an office recently, and whole floors were vacant. Rents have dropped by over half. There are still availabilities now. New graduates with no experience are finding it almost impossible to secure a job in Shanghai. Even graduates with master's degrees are asking to intern at our company, offering to work without pay. Some are even willing to pay just to get experience here. And we're just a small team of five or six people. How are things where you are? The depth and breadth of Shanghai's downturn is truly unprecedented, leaving many local residents heartbroken. Founder of Ji Shi Strategy Marketing Consulting, Shi Yuandong, posted a video on October 29th. I went to a high-end dining industry forum yesterday, but everything was scaled down. The drinks were basic, and they didn't even hand out a conference booklet. I live in Shanghai's most central area, in places like the former IPM Mall, Anfu Road, and Julu Road, which used to be packed with trendy people, now feel noticeably empty. Even the popular stores for influencers have gone through new owners. For those living in Shanghai, do you feel the same way, or is it just me? Other social media users have also voiced concerns about Shanghai's declining economy. Reports indicate a near-empty manufacturing sector and significant outflow of residents as the city struggles to revive its economy. Recently, a social media video showed Shanghai Fengshan District on Liberation West Road, where not a single person was seen during the day. Shops were shut, window displays empty, and buildings along the quiet streets bore a striking stillness, creating an almost frozen, lifeless atmosphere. Shanghai's iconic Qipu Road fashion market used to reflect China's consumer power. The once thriving market is now desolate, with many predicting its impending closure. 
Located in a prime Shanghai area, Qipu Road Markets boasts 10 large malls and over 3,000 clothing shops, making it a major apparel distribution center in East China. Once a shopper's paradise known for affordable fashion, the market now stands eerily empty. In its heyday, a small four square meter shop on Qipu Road could command annual rents of over 500,000 yuan with daily foot traffic exceeding 100,000 and daily goods turnover reaching hundreds of tons. Yet this lively atmosphere has been replaced by a grim desolation, as seen in the videos posted online of closed shutters and deserted walkways. Hey everyone, I'm from Shanghai Leather Goods, showing you around Chipu Road today, August 19. This is the bridge to the new Chipu Market, which used to be so crowded that you'd be careful not to get your feet stepped on. Now, there's hardly anyone here. Right now, it's peak season for autumn and winter fashion, but the entire market feels lifeless. Chipu Road, once bustling with people, large bags and vendors everywhere is now almost empty. Is this just off-season? Absolutely not. We're in the heart of seasonal change for autumn and even the e-commerce retailers have left leaving the floors closed the market has completely changed this video sparked discussions with another commentator sharing that her recent trips to Chipu road was also void of customers highlighting the challenges merchants face one store owner remarked that a six square meter shop that used to rent for over 200,000 yuan annually has sat vacant for three to four years. Though some shops remain open, monthly revenue often falls short of covering rent. Another owner, Wang Yu, commented that he plans to close his shop by the end of the year, lamenting that while he has barely made any profit, his anxiety has only grown. On October 23rd, Wang Yu, an officer at the Chipu Road Commercial District Office, confirmed in an interview with local media that the video accurately captured the scene. He explained that foot traffic is traditionally low during June, July, August, and January, February, leading many shops to temporarily close during these months, though this does not mean a permanent shutdown. This year, unusual patterns in Shanghai's economy have repeatedly sparked public discussions online. Six notable anomalies recently circulated on social media, which include 1. The decline in physical store sales, with many malls now seeing more employees than customers. Live streaming has also become common within stores. Number 2. The high vacancy rate in office buildings and business sparks, with landlords often waiving rent for several months while tenants only pay for utilities and maintenance. Number 3. The increased number of food delivery drivers, couriers, and rideshare drivers, despite falling income and at times even requiring a waiting list. Number four, rising difficulties for landlords to find tenants, with rental rates dropping as a result. Number five, despite significant government efforts to encourage spending, most people continue to save rather than spend, with deposits at banks steadily increasing. Number six, business owners are refraining from taking out loans to expend, instead seeking to refinance their existing high interest loans to cut costs. Shanghai, a leading economic force and a key indicator for global observers of China's economic health, presents some worrisome statistics. In June and July, data reveal a decline in consumer spending. According to the Shanghai Bureau of Statistics, retail sales of consumer goods dropped by 9.4% in June and 6.1% in July, indicating a notable dip in consumer confidence. The real circumstances behind these numbers reveal a deeper issue. Shanghai, known for its concentration of high-income earners, now reports repeated instances of negative growth as residents face job instability and income constraints, making them hesitant to spend. From January to July 2024, Shanghai's industrial output of major enterprises declined by 1.1%, with exports dropping by 8.2%. Additionally, actual foreign investment fell by 20% compared to last year. Such figures seem unimaginable for Shanghai, a city long associated with economic leadership, now experiencing a downturn. Economists attribute Shanghai's decline largely to the exodus of foreign companies, including Micron Technology, HP, Qualcomm, Microsoft, and IBM, as well as Citibank. In the first half of this year alone, over 10,000 foreign companies reportedly left. Factors include an increasingly challenging business environment, decoupling from Western nations, 
and post-pandemic economic sluggishness, which have prompted many multinational corporations to downgrade China's position on their investment list. With fewer homegrown innovative companies, Shanghai economic downturn seems inevitable. The pandemic undoubtedly hit consumer spending hard. Shanghai in particular has been left with an empty city effect following stringent lockdowns, which have deterred foreign nationals from returning. Shanghai's transient population comprises both migrants from other parts of China and foreign nationals. International companies brought in foreign executives and their families, fostering a high-end consumer market. Local businesses thrive by catering to this segment. But now, with private companies closing in doves and foreign businesses leaving, Shanghai's status as an international hub is under strain. Facing layoffs and economic uncertainty, many workers are forced to leave the city that once promised endless opportunity, leaving Shanghai a shadow of its former self. Mm-hmm.